Agent Romanov. You miss me? Oh yeah, Charles. We got ourselves an X-Men fan. Captain. Your Highness. Captain. Big fan. Spider-Man. Hey everyone. Hey everybody, welcome back to Film RT. I'm your guy, Trevor Baker, and today we are gonna be talking about the top five things you may have missed in the new Marvel movie, Shang-Chi. Before we start this video, what Pokemon was seen in Shang-Chi? We're gonna be talking about that on number four of this video. So tell me what Pokemon you saw in Shang-Chi, let me know. Shang-Chi has been an over resounding success for Marvel, bringing in a whopping $83 million at the box office, smashing Labor Day record. And as in any good Marvel movie, the sleuths of the internet come out and they look for every little Easter egg there is to find. Now, if you're like me, I get pretty overwhelmed by how many there can be. And sometimes we tie it connect strings that aren't necessarily there. I said, hey, what I'll do is I'll put only five of the things that I thought were worth noting and put it together in a video for you. So if you're like, I don't wanna know all the Easter eggs for Shang-Chi, but I'd like to know a little, I'd like to know the best. Well, that's what we're gonna do here today. So let's get started. So first things first, let's talk about the mysterious origin of the 10 rings. Now, although this isn't necessarily an Easter egg, the film doesn't really ever dive into the origin of the 10 rings. There's some things here and there, but overall, it doesn't really go to the origin that can be found in the comics. I'll be the first to admit, I don't know everything about Shang-Chi and the comic origins and all the narrative history. So I had to do some digging for this one, but apparently they're actually extraterrestrial in nature. After some comic book research, the 10 rings wielded by Shang-Chi are extraterrestrial in origins. Name of these extraterrestrials are the McLuhan's and they resemble dragons. They're like alien dragons. So sure, why not? Where it's Marvel, anything can happen at this point. The reason that I think it's worth noting is the McLuhan's is probably something to look out for since we are getting more fantastical in Marvel and even more so with the mid credit scene that was seen at the end of the movie. We did have Bruce Banner and Carol Danvers, AKA Captain Marvel show up at the end of Shang-Chi asking about the rings and trying to figure out exactly where they came from. The reason that I believe we might get our extraterrestrial situation or origin story here is because Captain Marvel is kind of our space Avenger. So that seems to make a lot of sense. And Bruce Banner himself has become pretty proficient and knowledgeable about all things space due to his recent adventures with Thor off in Thor Ragnarok. All I'm saying is here is it's worth noting that the 10 Reigns origin seems like it's going to be something we look back at and get more information on in future films. That brings me to the second thing you may have missed, but you definitely didn't miss seeing it, and that is a bunch of hulky green men. Yes, you like big muscular green men, this is the film for you because you've got, well, at least one of them and then one who's no longer green. It's worth noting about both. That's right, when the first trailer of Shang-Chi popped up, we were taken aback when we saw Abomination back in the MCU. As much as we'd like to connect the Incredible Hulk with the MCU, most people go, kind of, and Norton, we're not gonna talk about Abomination, maybe. But for the most part, we don't really draw a lot of connections between that movie and the Marvel properties moving forward. Shang-Chi blows that out of the water and brings the dear Abomination back, connecting those ties once again. And apparently Abomination is good friends with Wan. So there's an adventure I want to have on screen now. The Abomination Wan show, or I don't know. Can that happen? Could that be a miniseries? Who knows, but it seems like they have some kind of relationship and we do see him again in the fighting arena. This is not the only hunky green man we see. We actually see Mr. Bruce Banner once again, but he is not in Hulk form. He is not in Professor Hulk form, which, is giving us some questions worth noting. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where everything takes place on the timeline here with Shang-Chi. I know there's this post blip counseling poster. So some are saying it is indeed after everyone's been snapped back. And maybe that was mentioned, I just missed it. But all I'm saying is either it takes prior to Professor Hulk, which I think that's hard to believe, or Professor Hulk and Bruce Banner. There's the holy matrimony of Hulk and Bruce is no longer. And I'm sure once again, we will find that out in a future film, hopefully the standalone Hulk film that we've all been waiting for with the reintroduction of Abomination and having Bruce Banner have this little Easter egg of what happened between him and Hulk. We might actually have a narrative for a future film. Who's to say? 
So either I want the Abomination Wand series or I do want our Hulk standalone film. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Before we continue our video, I just want to let you guys know that we have a really cool Instagram that updates on a regular basis. So if you like all things Marvel, this is the Instagram for you. So go follow that LMRT Instagram right now. You won't regret it. I promise you. Seriously, open Instagram right now and click that follow button. Now back to the video. So for this third little thing you need to know that you may have missed is that there was a bunch of little Marvel references crammed into this, I guess, Easter egg, but I don't think any of it's actually important as it is more interesting. As you saw in the fighting arena, there's a couple of unique fighters that have some callbacks to previous Marvel movies. First, we have the fella who had the glowy look to him as he was fighting who i'll talk about here in a second and that glowy virus reminds us of the very virus in iron man 3 the extremist virus is how you say it basically the virus that makes them all strong and fiery and really that movie sucks so bad i hate iron man 3 so much i just it's not a it's not a good film that brings us to the person he was indeed fighting and it is a black widow we saw this black widow played by james zoo and the previous Black Widow movie. Once again, I don't know if there's anything to really draw from this except, oh, there's a Black Widow warrior here and there's the extremist virus dude here and those are all from Marvel movies. So Marvel, yay. I don't think this means we're gonna see them later. Definitely not the extremist virus guy, but I don't know if we're gonna see that Black Widow either. We also have another person rejoining us and that is the fella who was recording the bus battle between Shang-Chi and Razor Fist. Every time I hear Razor Fist, I just think of Taser Fist from Guardians. So it's a very funny, funny scene. And this person recording the bus fight was indeed Clap. And he was like, hey, I think I've seen Clap before. Ah, wait, where was it? That's right. He was actually a Street Fighter in Spider-Man Homecoming. And Marvel tends to do this where they take, you know, stand-in actors or people who show up and tend to throw them in other Marvel movies just so there's some continuity between all the stories. I don't think there's anything significant about Clap. I don't think he's become a superhero. I don't think he's become a plot point but he was in there as well. So kudos to Marvel for slapping Marvel on the back and making you say, hey, you see that? We, we made a movie on that. You see that? That was in a movie too. You see him? Also in a movie. That brings me to the fourth one, which is my favorite one. That I think it's one that people are missing is that Pokemon are now canon in the MCU. And I don't care what anyone says. That is my conclusion. It is, it's true. Pokemon are MCU approved. And the reason I'm saying this a little facetiously, but seriously, if you disagree with me, I'll ignore any comments you make about it because Pokemon being the MCU would be freaking dope. But we had this little nine tail fox running around and I'm like, if you don't see nine tails to Pokemon in that fox, I don't think you like Pokemon. The main thing to pull from here though, all joking aside, it is nine tails, I'm not gonna lie about that. But nine tails is just one of the numerous mystical creatures that were in Shang-Chi. And this is just very on par for where Marvel is going. We had dragons, we had guardian lions, we had the nine tails and every other fantastical beasts in this film. Just showing that Marvel is getting to the more fantastical, magical, and outer realms of their Marvel Cinematic Universe. What makes me happy about this is just they don't really care about everything making sense so much anymore. Not that it doesn't make sense, but it's very more true to the comics. It's not about like, oh, well, we gotta make the Iron Man suit look like something that can be made in real life. Now we're like, there's a freaking Nine Tails because yes, why not? They're in the land of the gods and there's dragons and guardian lions because freaking deal with it. That's what Marvel's doing now. I'm totally on board. And last but not least, something you've probably heard about, but it is indeed worth noting, if you missed this at all, is that the Ten Rings are not comic accurate. That's right, the Ten Rings that you see on Shane Chin's arms that you get a hold of, oh, spoiler alert, by the end of the film, is not indeed the way it is portrayed in the comics. They're actually rings. Lots of rings. Ten rings. Ten rings for ten fingers. So it would be really stinky if you lost a finger, because that would really hinder some of the things that you do. But that's besides the point. In the comics, it was indeed rings, but they felt that because we had the Infinity Gauntlet with like stones on the hand, and there's a lot of hand stuff. They're like, well, let's do something different. The rings are actually what they would use in like training martial arts to help improve accuracy, strength, and what have you. All I have to say is to just confirm that these really landed well. I didn't even think about I'm not a comic chain cheater, so maybe you're really bothered by it. I feel like this was way cooler to see things come out of rings, but to see the be manipulated in the way they are in the film. It's just very cool. The special effects are cool. And I'm, I don't know, it felt different. It's just not a weapon we see much. Like rings have been done before, you know, Green Lantern, you know, the Infinity Stones. So have these martial art rings around the forearms 
is pretty darn cool. So I, there you go. That is definitely worth noting. All that being said, have you seen Shape Chi? What did you think about it? Was there any Easter eggs you think were worth mentioning? Let me know in the comments below. And as always guys, if you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe, turn on the bell, like this video because it really does help us here at the channel. And as always, until next time guys, I will see you later. Thank you